Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Over Easy. My name is Manny. In case you're new here or welcome back, I hope you are having an amazing week, amazing day, amazing whatever, whenever you're listening to this right now. I am doing quite well and uh, let's get into Rosebud Thorn because there's a lot of things to say. I have a lot of thoughts. I feel like this week my mind has been extra super fast and like I've actually found it quite hard to read this week because as I'm reading I just have so many other thoughts going on and I don't love it need to meditate a little more I think so that I'm a little more mindful but that's just where my brain's been at recently but anyways let's get into a check-in rose bud and a thorn okay my rose is that summer is finally here although it's supposed to rain tomorrow but hot girl summer is officially here it is sunny in Vancouver blue skies no clouds and up to 20 degrees celsius it was the same yesterday and It just makes me so happy. Like, I feel like I'm finally like cracking out of my shell again. I am someone, I don't have seasonal effectiveness like disorder uh, as serious as other people may have it, but I definitely am just very affected by the weather and so many months of rain and gray and cloudiness in Vancouver can just really put a toll on me. And so finally it is blue skies and so sunny and warm. I'm wearing shorts today it just makes me feel like like I'm finally able to come out of my cocoon and I can finally live my best life it is so nice I'm gonna tell you my summer uniform right now that I'm wearing because it's officially summer so I am wearing my favorite white t-shirt it's my Patagonia shirt that I got in Austin on my solo trip this is just one of my favorite shirts of all time I think the graphic is so cute there's one in the little front left corner and then also a big one on the back I, I love it I love this shirt. It is such good quality. It's like my favorite shirt of all time. Not sponsored, but Patagonia, please. Uh, This is my favorite shirt. I love it. So I'm wearing it today. And then on the bottom, you can't see in the video, but on the bottom, I'm wearing Aritzia, a Goldie denim shorts. I don't know what style or whatever. I bought these quite a few years ago, like I think in 2019 now. And that is what I must say. I love these shorts because they were freaking expensive, but they are such good quality for sure. This is like, I think I want to buy more a Goldie jeans and shorts because they're literally such a good investment. I've had these since 2019 and they, I throw them in the washing machine. I don't do anything special with them and they're still such good quality. So these are a Goldie denim shorts. They're like a light-ish wash distressed on the bottom and they're just perfect I think they were like $168 when I bought them and I was so shook about spending so much money on one piece of clothing but this has definitely been like the best investment in my wardrobe so far so I definitely want to buy maybe one more this year we'll see we'll see how it goes and then on the bottom obviously I'm wearing shorts so my legs are exposed I guess but the thing that makes this the hot girl summer uniform is my little anklet I wear a little anklet in the summer with my white slip-on vans and it is like the perfect summer vibe because you know it's just so cute and beachy I love it I bought this anklet in Austin as well I believe it's like a little chain of hearts and it's gold and it's the cutest thing ever and it just adds that like perfect little summer flair into my outfit and I'm like once I put the anklet on it's officially summer for sure anyways that is my rose is that it is such good weather yesterday and today it's supposed to rain tomorrow which sucks but the fact that you know we're just getting more sun now is so nice April I feel like was super rainy this year and so I'm just really excited and looking forward to a good May good weather for sure okay my thorn is um My thorn is I have been, okay, so let me give you an update. I deleted TikTok a couple weeks ago, maybe like two weeks ago or one week ago at this point, because I was just really frustrated with how addicted I was to it. I was scrolling for so long every single night, you know, not sleeping or going to bed late and just doing not productive things with my time. So because I deleted TikTok, but I still have like that natural instinct to go on my phone. I've been going on Instagram a lot more. And 
I have been watching a lot of Instagram stories and I feel like it's just so weird, but I feel like everyone who I know in university, like a lot of people are graduating this year, people who are a year younger than me. So they took four years to do their undergrad or people who are my age who took five years to do their undergrad. Everyone is like graduating from university this year. I don't know. And I don't know, watching it, it doesn't make me sad and I don't really have FOMO, but it just makes me remember like, oh my God, I graduated university one year ago. It's end of April, which is when I finished my last final exam last year. And like, just to think how much things have changed in one year, granted it's both good things and bad things. So it's not quite a thorn, but just that realization, that fact is freaking crazy. It's like truly this year has gone by so fast and that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to talk about that later too in my April update. This year has just gone by so fast and for sure this has been the year that I've grown the most and just become my own person but it just freaks me out a little that time is going by so fast and you know like I'm already 23. Next year I'm going to be 24. Oh my god I don't even want to think about it right now let's not talk about it. But that's my thorn. It's just like realizing how fast time is passing. And it's just really, really crazy to me. And oh, if I think about it for too long, I get a little freaked out. Okay. My bud. My bud is, okay. I have to give you guys a weekly update. Oh my God. So last week I talked about this guy that I think is kind of cute. And I don't remember what exactly I shared, But my plan was, or a thought that crossed my mind was that I wanted to give this guy my number because I think he's cute, but also because, and this is kind of selfish of me, but also because I want to say that I have given someone my number before. I've never been someone who makes the first move, really. I always wait and I'm just like, meh. And, uh... (laughs) So I wanted to, you know, given that I'm single now and I'm just like trying to live my best life and have a hot girl summer, I was like, for once in my life, I must make the first move. And so I have been wanting to give this guy my number. And he is a truck driver who I see quite regularly because I see all the truck drivers that come and go in our warehouse. And so, oh my God, (laughs) this is so crazy to talk about. I this week finally like talked to him for real which is crazy so before usually when how this works is when truck drivers are here to pick up shipments for their customers they have to go through me because i work at the release desk and so what i do is they give me what they're picking up usually that is some sort of reference number or pickup number so that i can check it in our system and i have to make sure that everything is good to go so that just means like things are paid for the correct driver is here if it's not the same driver that the customer told me like say for example the customer told me that ups is going to pick this up but actually fedex is here then i have to double check those things like make sure everything is consistent and ready to go so i see every single driver that comes into our warehouse and so i've talked about this before but we live in the lower mainland and it's not huge so a lot of the drivers are the same and i've gotten to know a lot of them and i love talking to them so before when i've t- talked to this driver when i was in a relationship, I would just like make small talk. You know, we were talking about how he had contacts and stuff like that. And then this week he came in on, what day was it? Wednesday? I can't remember. Dude, this week has like melded into one thing, but it was Wednesday. And I think it was, I think it was Wednesday. Okay, whatever. And it just so happened that at the exact same time that he was picking up a shipment, there were like four other truck drivers here to pick up as well. And we don't have that many forklift drivers to release all at the same time. You know, there's a lot of things going on at once. So we implement like a first come first serve policy. So, you know, I was like, oh, it's pretty busy right now. You're going to have to wait a little bit. And he was like, oh, that's fine. It's just part of the game. I was like, yeah, right. So everything's fine. I do all the paperwork and release the shipment to him. I was like, you just have to wait. You can park here. And if we have time, we'll load it out to you on the car, whatever. 
But it ended up being quite a hassle that day. There were a lot of things that were like not quite right. If everything was going smoothly, it actually would have been pretty fast. But I'm going to do a little tangent in a sec. But some of the people were being a little bit rude to me and also just like being a little bit uh, not nice. So there were a lot of things that weren't quite going right that day. So the delay was like quite a bit longer than we thought. And naturally, I really can't do much to help. Like I was trying to be a traffic patrol, be like, this driver is picking up these pallets. This driver is picking up these pallets. Please do it when you can. But I don't drive a forklift. So I can't really do much other than that. I'm just there kind of like, looking and waiting making sure everything's going okay sorry i must tangent to another thing (laughs) because this week has been really freaking crazy for work i think uh, starting from now you know we had a bit of a chill month in march and beginning of april but starting now we're kind of picking back up again and oh my gosh so there are there was this one truck driver he came on the same day wednesday And so what happens when the drivers come in is they have to show me a number. But sometimes because customers choose the same trucking company, they'll pick up two or three shipments at once and then do the deliveries after, right? But in order to let them pick up everything, they have to show me all the right numbers. So for example, I might have shipment A, B, and C, and A and B, they might be totally different clients, but they might both choose UPS to be their driver. And so when UPS comes, they're gonna have to be like, I'm picking up A and B to deliver. And I'm like, okay, here's A and B. But the thing is, not it's not always like that, right? It's the most efficient for one driver to come and pick up everything. But sometimes trucking companies will split it up and actually send two drivers and be like, actually, shipment A is going somewhere really far away and shipment B is really, really local. So we're going to send two different trucks because that's just what makes sense. I don't know the logistics behind that. I just release based on what people tell me they're picking up. So there's this one driver that comes on Wednesday and he is like new or not familiar. Um, I have worked with this company and seen the drivers many, many times, but this guy I've never seen before. So he comes in and already walking in, like, he's like, where's the office? Like, I'm here to pick up, like, stuff. And you can just tell the demeanor is not great. And so I was like, okay, I can help you in the office over here because they have to go through me first. Otherwise, what are they picking up? No one knows. So the driver says, I'm picking up this and it is four pieces. In my mind, I know that this company has two things that they could pick up. But the driver told me I'm here to pick up four pieces and this number only. It was in total, both things would be 10 pieces, but the driver told me four pieces and this number only. So what I did was, even though I know that there's 10 pieces that this shipment could pick up, the driver only said four, so I said, okay, here's the paperwork for the four. So then everything else is good, and then they load up the four, and the driver actually leaves before he comes back in the office again and says, wait, I actually had 10 pieces. And then I was like, you only showed me the number for four. And he was like, I thought you just knew. And I said, I can't release based on what I just know. You have to tell me. So and then he was just being kind of rude. I feel like a lot of times drivers don't take me seriously because I'm a girl and I'm pretty young, which is a glass ceiling thing, but it's fine. Actually, it's not fine. It just it really frustrates me at times. But I was like, you know, this guy's already not really nice. So I'm just going to release the other six pieces and call it a day because I don't want to deal with him anymore. So that was my little tangent was just like I was so frustrated because he was getting mad at me when you were the one who had to show me because how am I supposed to know what you're supposed to pick up, right? I'm not the truck driving logistics person. I just release based on what numbers you show me. So what the heck? Yeah, so that was not very pleasant and I was quite upset. Anyways, the cute driver was there that same afternoon and because of this whole fiasco with I still have six other pieces to pick up, the loading took a quite bit longer than usual and then there was like a third driver that was here but then the shipment couldn't fit in his truck so we had to deal with that. So I'm like just kind of standing there because I can't really do much. Like it's really just between the drivers and the forklift, the truck drivers and the forklift drivers. And so I was standing outside and then we ended up talking, me and the cute driver. 
because the cute driver was also waiting for his shipments, but both of the forklift drivers were busy at the time dealing with these other people. And yeah, we were just talking. We talked about like we actually introduced ourselves to each other and stuff like that. And I was just like, oh my God. And so I was already ready to give him my number that day, but I was so, I chickened out. We won't talk about it, but I did chicken out, but next time I see him for sure. But I'm also now worried that he's actually married or like in a relationship. So I think I should ask him first. Anyways, my bud, I guess, is that I'm excited to do this. I don't know. I I just had to share that story because that's been my life this week. I've been work, like work has been a lot more busy. And for some reason or another, all the drivers come at once and then it makes it a hugely stressful situation. (sighs) Yeah, but my bud is also, I'm looking forward to a hot girl summer getting to know people I think I've realized like that I don't want to be on dating apps I was thinking about it like you know when I was first single I was like oh I think I'll wait a little bit and when I feel ready you know maybe in the summer later on I'm gonna go on dating apps and stuff like that but I've realized like I think it's so much more fun to meet people organically and just like that dating apps I feel like is like so unnatural and then like everyone there is not scummy but just like you don't really know their true intentions and also kind of freaky because they might like kill you yeah that's one of my biggest fears so that's my check-in for the week I've had a very crazy week and starting in May I'm going to be working a little bit more as well so even more work stories to come because work is crazy. It's also really fun, but uh, I've also been dealing with a lot of crazy customers this week. Anyways, a lot of things we can talk about at another time. Let's get into today's affirmation of the podcast. Of course, we must do that because that is what we do every single time. Let's see. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Inhale bravery, exhale doubt. Why is it this affirmation that comes up after I talk about being too scared to give the driver my number? Okay, well, inhale bravery and exhale doubt, I guess, is what I'm going to take with me on Monday when I see him at work, because I think for sure he's coming on Monday to pick something up. Anyways, okay, I wanted to give a little April update. I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to make this episode my April review and May goals, kind of like what I did for March review and April goals. But like, to be honest, I cannot remember anything that happened in April. This month went by so, so quickly. It's actually quite crazy and a little bit worrying. Um, April went by so fast and it was just... I'm like shook. So that's why I can't really do like a full April review and May goals. I also haven't set my May goals yet because I don't really know. I'm still thinking about it. But I will give you a small April review, I guess. Okay, the two biggest things in April that I think changed were that I saw my friends a lot. Like basically every weekend, except for this weekend, I have seen my friends. And I have indulge in a lot of my favorite hobbies by myself. So I've really reconnected with the things that I like to do. First thing is spending time with my friends. It was so much fun. It was very nice to see people every single weekend. Of course, I was coming from not seeing my friends at all much and only spending time with my previous partner on the weekends. So it was just a lot nicer to see people and have fun we had potlucks we just like had dinner it was a very chill vibe but it was still really fun and I think that is what I've learned is to really prioritize these relationships because they are just so important and also really what makes life worth living Second thing is engaging in my hobbies again. So this month I did pottery. I built my bowl and then I glazed it last weekend. And I think I can pick it up tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. Also did bouldering, which was really, really fun. Started my reading journal. I've been reading a lot more, doing content. Just 
engaging in things that simply make me happy and make me feel content. And that has really allowed me to reconnect with myself, just enjoy spending time, enjoy spending, what is the word? Enjoy my own company and also like just have fun while doing these things. I, I always thought like, oh, like no one wants to do these things with me, so I can't do them. But like you can just do them by yourself. Who cares? You know what I mean? So that was my April pretty much. Otherwise, like just working, doing the adult things, but it was really fun. Okay, today's episode is going to be kind of random, but it is something I thought about last night. And today I'm going to be talking about things that I am scared of because naturally we have lots of fears sometimes. I am definitely someone who has fears. I know people can kind of be like YOLO and stuff, but I am definitely not like that. So I'm going to share what I'm scared of. Some it's ranging in deepness. Some things are really basic, but yep. Anyways, let's get started. Okay. First thing that I am scared of, and I don't think I'm alone with this, is bugs. Bugs of all type. Bugs of like even ladybugs. I'm really freaked out by and butterflies butterflies also scare me I think what scares me about butterflies is um like the unexpectedness of them like they can just fly at your face that is what scares me and same with ladybugs the only thing that maybe like the only bugs I'm not really scared of are probably snails and slugs I think they're really cute and also because they move so slowly they're not gonna like jump at you I think that's like the biggest thing that I'm scared of with bugs is like they can just fly at any second or jump at any second and that really freaks me out so bugs. Um, I wanted to share a story about when I first moved alone and it was, it's about bugs. So when I first moved in, I think I've shared this on the podcast before, but I'm going to share it again because it's truly like one of the like keystone moments I remember since moving out. So I live in a little apartment, as you may know, and I live by myself and I have a little balcony and it is great. So one thing that I realized early on in living alone here in this unit is that it really requires big ventilation if my oven is on at a really high temperature. Like anything above 400, I have to be very cautious. If I leave the oven open for too long, the smoke alarm will go off for sure, no doubt. So that is what I quickly realized since uh, moving out alone is that my smoke alarm is more sensitive than me. (laughs) And so what I would do to combat that is open windows, turn on the stove top fan thing, and also open my patio door because ultimately windows and the little fan thing don't do much. Like really, I need to like fan out the air, the hot air and get some cold air in here. So I opened the patio door. But this was still at a time when it was quite warm outside. I think this was like September or October. So my door was open a little bit too wide. And also it was pretty close to nighttime. And this gigantic crane fly flies into my apartment through the door. Now I know I have learned I've been to outdoor education camps. I know crane flies are not harmful. In fact, they are great because they eat mosquitoes. But they look so scary. They look terrifying. They're huge. They have long skinny legs and they fly everywhere. And it is terrifying. So this giant crane fly flies in through the door and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. And uh, at first, it's quite chill. It flies in, lands in the little corner that I'm pointing at. You can't see it, obviously. Um, But I'm like, oh, my God, I need to get this out of my apartment. I thought it would just fly out, back out the door again by itself. But it wasn't moving. It just landed in the corner. And I was like, oh, my God, this thing is huge. Like, I think, no joke, it was as big as my hand. Like, it was gigantic. So... What, what do I naturally do if I want it to move and it's not moving on its own? I try to prompt it to move. So I get my big feather duster <laughs> and I poke my feather duster at the crane fly. And this is when it freaks me out even more because I was not thinking straight. It flies in all different directions again. And I'm like, oh my God. And I know it's not going to hurt me. So really, if it touched me, it would be fine. But I did not want to get 
anywhere close to this thing at all. So I poke it with my feather duster and then it's like flying sporadically everywhere again. And uh, I keep pro- it like flies into the living room and I'm like, oh, please do not come into the living room. This is freaking gross. Eventually, I keep poking and poking. I think this is like a five minute long thing. It eventually flies into the bathroom. Thank goodness. It flies in the bathroom and I'm just like basically chasing it around with a feather duster at this point, trying to get it to where I want it to go. And eventually it lands in the shower. (laughs) So what's my natural instinct now? Drown it. So I turn on the shower, hit the water with it, and then it flies, it slides down the drain. That has been one of my most core memories of moving out since ever. And it also solidifies the fact that I am terrified of bugs, flying, jumping, crawling, anything. And this will probably be forever a fear of mine. So that's my first fear. Okay, next. My next fear I have actually realized, which is not great, is I have realized I'm actually slightly scared of dogs. (laughs) Um... There's like no real reason in particular. I think I've just like, because I've never had a dog, I have grown up with this like distance from dogs. And so they kind of, I don't really know. But I, some of my friends have dogs and I just like naturally don't really like them or want to go and pet them. I only like go up to them if, they are sleeping or just lying there it's not really I guess I'm not really scared of them sometimes I am I definitely can be but I think I just like don't really like dogs and that might be an unpopular opinion sorry about it okay next one one of my biggest fears obviously I'm not going to talk much about this because it actually quite scares me is harmful people Do I need to say anything else? Uh, You know, living as a woman by yourself, especially when it becomes nighttime, there's a lot of things that can happen. And reading the news does not help. I actually have not read the news in a very long time, especially because I deleted TikTok. But it's just wild to me that people can do such terrible things. And so it really, really scares me. That is why I, when I went to Austin by myself, I literally would not leave my Airbnb past 7 p.m. Even though it was like the summer, so the sun wouldn't set until like 8 or so. I was just like, no, like I don't want to get stuck out there in case anything happens. It's just really freaky and it sucks that, you know, you have to be so, obviously you have to be aware of your surroundings, but it sucks that we are forced to be basically because of things that might happen. Anyways. Next up, I am scared of my mind limiting my potential and never realizing how much I'm missing. One of the things that I have learned since doing fitness classes very regularly is that literally your mind is like the only thing that's stopping you. There are so many instances, even yesterday when I was in my fitness class, yesterday was quite tiring, I would say. And my mind was like, okay, I'm going to walk the next block. Okay, I'm going to walk the next block. I can't do it. I can't run anymore. And I have been noticing that when I feel that way, I try to challenge myself to keep running. And most of the time, I can actually do it. Your body or your mind, actually, I should say, is usually just scared of pushing yourself to the limits because you don't know what's beyond your limits. You really don't know. It might be good stuff. It might be bad stuff. So because of that, naturally, our mind is trying to protect us by giving us fears, telling us we can't do things. But the fact that, you know, my mind is telling me I can't keep running, but I actually can makes me wonder what else is my mind holding me back from? Maybe it's holding me back from, oh, I'm scared to achieve my dreams because of instability or financial instability or whatever. But in reality, it's like holding me back from my greatest accomplishments. So that is something I'm really scared of is that like I'll live my life in my comfort zone and not achieve things 
that I could do or want to do simply because my mind is too scared. And of course, we don't need to achieve great things like big things to live a successful life, but I don't want to be living in my comfort zone all the time and like realize that I could be doing so much more. So that's like one of the things that I'm very scared of is that when I look back on my life in the future, that I'll realize like, I really didn't get to do much because my mind was always scared and my mind was always telling me that I couldn't do it. So that is why I've implemented, you know, positive self-talk and affirmations because really like these are all thoughts. And I'm sure we've heard that, you know, thoughts are not reality. Thoughts are just your perception. And so, of course, your perception can change. And that is what's great about it is because we can literally change that and I would say that I've definitely been working towards like not having this fear anymore by telling myself positive things and all that so I'm not as worried anymore but this is definitely something I think about a lot not a lot maybe just think about next up things that I'm scared of is being complacent. That is also just kind of related to the last one, but I could use that to talk about being complacent in a relationship with someone else because sometimes I can't tell if when I feel upset, like this is something that's natural in the relationship or it's a sign that tells me there could be something better out there. And I think that's also not great to like constantly be thinking, oh, there could be better, there could be better, and like always think that the grass is greener. But genuinely, it could be, right? Like, I don't want to settle in a relationship that doesn't challenge me or doesn't make me become the best version of myself and makes me be complacent and stuff like that. So I think that's definitely something I'm scared of. Also, like, We could use this towards everything, like being complacent in the work environment. I am scared that I've realized that uh, this is a big realization I had last week. I genuinely could not care less about trying to climb the corporate ladder, getting a really good job. Like for me right now, at least my job is just what enables me to live my best life outside of work hours. And Sometimes I'm scared that I have that, like, that because I have that mindset, I will be complacent in my work because I do have dreams about achieving really good career goals or doing certain things for my career. But I'm also worried that because right now I think about the fact that, you know, jobs are not really important to me and I will just do anything. I've realized that because. Like, I was like, you know, I've really enjoyed all the jobs that I've done. Grant, like, if they, to me, are worth the cost, if the benefits are worth the cost, I'll pretty much like any job that I have. That's what I realized. So I was like, maybe to me, like, jobs are just not really something I need to be stressing out about because you know my mom is always like you need to work for a big corporation you need to have that experience I'm like I genuinely could not care less about that and not want to do it more so it does kind of concern me that I feel this way because then I'm like well what if I just am stuck in a job that like I'm stuck doing the actions in my job and I'm not actively learning or growing I always that's what I want in my life is just to always be learning and growing and so I'm scared of being complacent because then I'll just be like kind of going through the motions and not challenging myself okay next up my next fear is losing the people that I love I mean this is probably something that is a fear for everyone or a lot of people I think in many points in my life, I took the people that I love for granted and just wasn't the nicest towards them. But I have realized that naturally everyone will come and go in your life, whether it be friends, whether it be family, whether whether it be partners. And I don't want to feel regret about not spending enough time with them when I had the chance, not 
doing X, Y, and Z with them. Stuff like that. So losing the people I love is also very scary to me. Next up, losing myself or being inauthentic. I was journaling this morning and I realized, you know, there's a, when we're in a relationship, we get kind of blinded and there are things that you will give up, even though you know in your core that that's not what you want. And I don't, I'm scared of losing myself again if I get into a new relationship. That is like probably one of the biggest things holding me back is like, I don't want to get to a point where I'm codependent. I am relying on this person to make me happy. I'm relying on this person to give me my identity. Naturally, our identity will shift and change as we live, but I really enjoy my relationship with myself right now and how I'm living my life by myself. And so I don't want to lose that. And I'm scared of losing this. So this gave me motivation to journal about it today and just kind of tell myself like if I if and when I get into my next relationship, I will put in the effort to make sure that I still spend time with myself, that not all my waking hours are spent thinking about the person that I love, spending time with the person that I love. Like I want to keep a little nugget of I don't remember the exact words I said, but I wanted to say, I said, I want to keep some hobbies, time, and thoughts to myself. Just to keep it as like my little thing. Not to be like super guarded and not let people in anymore because of harm, but more just because like I want to maintain a really nice relationship with myself. One other thing I was thinking about, oh my God, I'm sorry, this episode's probably like all over the place. I was just realizing that I'm reading this book Oh, that's what I forgot I was going to do. I was going to do a book update. I'll do it at the end. I'm reading this book called Heartbroken by Laura Pratt. And it just, when I was reading it today, it made me realize like falling in love, even though it can have, it can be really, it can hurt a lot after if you break up or whatever, even though the costs can be super, super high, the benefits of growing with someone else, learning about yourself, learning about someone else, and just growing, I think makes love so worth it. That is so cheesy to say. But truly, I think that, you know, the benefits of learning about yourself, being able to be a better partner, a communicator, is just so worth the potential costs. So I'm not trying to say I'm going to boycott relationships forever because naturally I'm already crushing on this new guy. But I definitely, in my next relationship, I don't want to lose myself and I want to maintain some, I want to maintain independence, a lot of independence and like have my own thing going on, not have to rely on my partner to have fun and stuff like that. But I just feel like it's so hard because when we're in love, all we want to do is spend time with our favorite person and do things together. But I think in order to make relationships really successful, you got to maintain some sort of independence too. Last but not least, my fear is health issues. I, I think this is like one of the biggest motivators for my fitness and why I work out so much is because I want to live a healthy life and enjoy the things that I can you know be fit enough to spend time with my kids and play games with them and go outside with them and live long to see them grow up and spend time with them so this yeah this fear Although it's like, it's somewhat, you can control it, but also somewhat not, definitely keeps me motivated. So what I've realized is a lot of these fears are what motivate me to act certain ways. My fear of bugs it makes me not open my patio door so much. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But like more of my like mental fears, right? Like my fear of health issues 
forces me to not forces but motivates me to get out of bed and live a healthy life prioritize my sleep prioritize working out getting stronger so that i can live a healthy life my fear of losing myself in my next relationship motivates me to stay independent do things by myself and have fun by myself enjoy my own company my fear of being complacent motivates me to always challenge myself to grow and take the time to reflect so oh wow this is like a really nice wrap-up for this episode is that even though i have a lot of fears and they might be quite big they don't terrify me to the point where i can't live anymore in fact they motivate me to live even more they live makes me live harder live better live more genuinely proactively actively wow that's a really good lesson to come out of this episode i did not plan that at all i just realized that as i was recording so it was like a live reaction but yeah definitely okay i gotta go soon because i have some family stuff this weekend but i did want to share about my reading uh i finished china rich girlfriend last week by kevin kwan it's the second book in the crazy rich asian series it was a five star read for me no doubt it was so good one of the biggest things i noticed was how many more words i knew the definition of because they were literally in my gre vocab list so that was really nice because those descriptive words really added to the imagery that's like one of the favorite parts of the book or my favorite thing or my favorite aspect of kevin kwan's writing is that it is so detailed but using few words because he uses such good words such descriptive words and so it's great imagery i also loved that because i watched the first movie now i have an image for all the characters in my mind and it was so nice to be able to picture it I'm reading Heartbroken by Laura Pratt, as I said right now. I don't love it, to be honest. It's like a three star for me right now. I'm in the middle of it, and I don't even know if I should finish. I want to, but I also don't want to. So I'll tell you about it next week. That's going to be my episode for today. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next week. Bye. And I was like, yo. Yo.